I'll sit anywhere right now. <laughs> I think I might walk to Saudi. <laughs> First of all, Chip, congratulations. Uh, I gotta say, that was probably one of the best fights I've ever seen live and everything like that. So, what were your first thoughts when the referee waved off the fight? What was the first thing that went through your mind? You saw when he's like, yeah, the fight's over. And you know, you're the new featherweight champion of the world. I just was like, finally, like, <laughs> all my hard work, um, it paid off. Finally, the fight is over. I'm a, I'm a world champion now. I really couldn't believe it. It was it's a dream come true. And, and Eddie, I know you know you you signed him was it back in 2019. <clears throat> so how does it feel like you know you signed him and then you took him? Cause I know I think he was mad for going to the Olympics something like that. But you took, you know you invested in him and now he's like the first American fighter that's actually won a won a world title in the year. Yeah, it's, it's mad. I remember when he used to turn up with his haircut and these Ralph Lauren shirt he used to wear all the time, like this blue and orange one. He used to wear it all the time. And uh, But over the last couple of years, you've really seen him develop as a man as well, you know, and, and you've seen his physique change a lot. Um, you've seen him start stopping people. And I think the fight against Magdaleno kind of showed that he was he was ready. But the, mo the most impressive thing is no one wanted to fight that guy at all. Like yeah, people vacated people belts. That, yeah. People were just like, you know, I know because I had some fighters who could afford him, you know, and I, I recommended they didn't fight him because the guy is dangerous and he hasn't really announced himself on the world stage. So why would you fight a guy like that? But as soon as it was offered to Ray, he was like, no problem, straight away. And he beat probably one of the most dangerous 126 pounders in the world tonight. Now, what, no. Right, was this power coming to us power for real? Like, I, cause I know, I mean, it was made a big deal. He's 11 and 0 with 10 knockouts. Like, when you, like, you know, when the first you know, exchange of punches that like, you guys threw, like, did you really feel them, or you're like, okay, this guy's really, you know, this guy's really uh, powerful, and then I gotta really box him a certain way. You see how I was stepping to him? Yeah. I ain't feel nothing. I, would, I felt like it, it was nothing I never felt before. Um, and you gotta understand, like I'm not a soft person. Like I can, I can go through whatever. I can take whatever. I can. I'm, a, I'm a dog for real. So um, if you hit me, I'm gonna hit you back harder. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's now I know. I mean, I, I heard the rumors that you had a tough weight cut and everything. So I mean, I, what are your plans for? I guess no unification with the other featherweight champions. Because uh, I mean, you're the highest featherweight right now. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's why I was. Uh, it'd be interesting for you to get in the mix with them. Uh, we just gotta wait and see. Um, I gotta, I gotta, you know, talk with my team and uh, see what what makes the most sense, money wise too. Like, I feel like um, if I if I gotta make 126 again, I, I want to be paid, you know, to probably to to fight at 126 again. So um, we can unify, like I said before. Um, like I said, I had a, a tough weight cut, but if it makes sense, I I'll get down to 126 one more time. All right, excellent. And then one more question. So what are, what are your first plans as champion cloud non that have nothing to do with boxing? Like what will we be doing after this? Spend time with my beautiful daughter, uh, my family, and take a vacation and you know enjoy the fruits of my labor. Excellent. Again, congratulations. Appreciate it. Before the final round, did you kinda knew did you kinda sense that, that you are behind? You have to go for it? Uh, my team was telling me from like round five to keep picking it up. I heard my manager, I heard Eddie in the crowd, uh, pick it up, keep stepping to him. Um, and I've been t like, they said it on the, uh, I said it on the camera, I guess the camera picked it up, but I was saying it the whole time, like, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna get to him, uh, just relax. I, I was, you know, staying calm and patient, uh, weathered the storm a few times, and uh, eventually the time was coming and uh, I got to him. He's a guy kind of known as a powerful, a big puncher. Yeah. And did you feel the power? Uh, no, not really, no, I didn't. And then, uh, we are Japanese media, and uh, there is a guy named uh, Naoya Inoue at yeah. the 122, yeah. and uh, he's moving up to the featherweight next year. Yeah. If, oh, you'll be here. Oh, you'll be here. Yeah. Nope. So how hard it is to make? 126 for you. I've been making 120 and 126, 125 since I was in amateurs. That's what six years, seven years ago. So um, yeah, it's, it's very tough. So maybe one more fight and then maybe move. Yeah, them. maybe possibly talk to Eddie. Yeah, to Eddie. We'll see. We'll yeah. see what's going but on. When you have, when you have a belt, it gives you gives you great value. Right. You know. So I think Ray's right. If it if it is another fight at 126, it has to be a lot of money. But that can happen because you've got a belt. When you move up and you don't have a belt, sometimes that can affect 
your value. So, but he's got to make it safely and he's got to perform at his best. So that's a decision for him and his team. But I'd like to see one quick one, if we can. Bank some money and then move up. And you know, we've got Joe Caldina at 1.30. Obviously, you've got Shaki Foster at 1.30. So, you know, tonight he became a star. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the semi-final, Lopez? Yeah, we were, we were watching here. Lopez is very awkward, a horrible star. I mean, that you know, I, I fancy Ray would beat him actually. Um, he beat Warrington in a close fight. He knocked out Michael Conlon. He throws punches from strange angles, but your guy uh, had an eye injury early in the fight, and it was very difficult to come back from that. How did you choose him as a? Your fighter when you are coming to the United States. Yeah, so we, we just put out an Instagram post where I sent him a DM on Instagram because you hear about great fighters like on the amateur system, and someone told me there's this kid from New Jersey called Ray Ford. So I was like, looked him up on Instagram, slid straight into his DMs, and he said he was going to go to Tokyo for the Olympics, and that didn't work out. And then he actually come back to me, he said, look, I'm going to turn pro. And then he came into our office in New York with 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 your family, wasn't it? With like four yeah. or five people. Yeah. And he was kind of you're like 19, weren't you? Yeah, I was 19. Yeah. And he was just very shy, and and I knew at that time there was a, a lot of work to be done. Like you have to give that fighter a lot of opportunity to grow. But I feel like we did that on a lot of big shows. And he always he often fought fighters in their backyard as well. You know, um, the draw that he had on his record was a joke, really. That he won that fight comfortably. But we also brought him to England twice, didn't you? Box twice, once in Nottingham, once at Fight Camp. You won your first title in in the UK as well, and boxed on some big cards in America. And that's why I said to him tonight, this guy has not fought under this kind of pressure before on this kind of stage, and it makes a big difference. Like he wasn't nervous in the slightest because he's, he's been on big shows. He's been under pressure, not under pressure like that. And you know now, he, he you know he took a chance tonight fighting that guy. I know it was for a world title, but he still took a chance. So now he's got to make sure he gets what he deserves. And that's, you know, making sure that he can secure his future, especially with that belt. So you knew this day would come? I did, yeah. But sometimes great fighters never get the opportunity to win a world championship. And listen, if that goes another seven seconds, he gets beat tonight, you know? And that's the margins in sport. But the great ones make it happen when it doesn't matter if there's one second left. Like, there's not many fighters that could have done that tonight to come back and stop it. We're actually sitting right behind you and I've never seen you so <laughs> gifts, so <laughs> excited. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> nice. that, that was right up there, but you know, yeah. I've got to go. I was supposed to be in uh, Saudi Arabia today yeah. and uh, it was a long way to get here, but I just had a feeling he was going to win. I thought if, if I'm not there yeah. and he wins that world title, I'll be so, so devastated. But it's, I'm very, very proud of him. And like I said, now, I told him before, and I mean it, you change your life if you win tonight, and that's what's going to happen. So, simply put, how, how do you feel with the belt and the sit down as a champ? Uh, it feels great. Uh, it, probably, it really didn't settle in because, you know, I'm still here. I got to go get stitches and things like that. But um, it, it might settle in as, you know, time goes on, maybe later on tonight, or maybe next week, maybe next month, I don't know. But right now, I'm just living in the moment. Thank you. What's going to be the fast shopping? You're going to buy something? Am I going to buy something? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Next I, fight. I, yeah, probably next fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. A couple of houses or something like that. <laughs>